Hi, my name is Laura Pennington, and thank you for reaching out to me for advice about freelance writing or becoming a virtual assistant. These are both things that I have done since 2012, kind of started by accident. I actually stayed in my day job for a full year after starting my freelance writing and virtual assistant side business. And um, I actually met and surpassed my day job income in less than three months, but I stayed at my day job for a full year because I wanted to make sure this was something that I could replicate and that it wasn't just a fluke. So I've seen uh, both sides of the picture. I've been full time since the summer of 2013. It's been a six figure business for me since that point. And I've also been in the position where it's, you know, like a side business while I have a, a day job as well. So the cool thing about freelancing and one of the reasons that I recommend it to so many people is that it's very, very flexible. So if you have a lot of hours in the day and you want to do it full time, you certainly can. When you start out, you'll be doing much more marketing than you are actual client work. Um, but that can change over time. You know, now I do very little marketing and a whole lot of client work. The other thing that I like about it is, you know, if you only have two hours a day, you know, if you're a, a stay at home parent, you've only got brief windows due to daycare or whatever, or if you have a day job and you just want to bring in extra money, that's totally doable. A lot of the students that I have worked with, um, they're retirees, they have a day job that they actually want to keep, they have other responsibilities. You know, when I first started uh, as a freelance writer, I was a PhD student at night at the time as well. So it's totally flexible based on how many hours you have. Um, now I, I did stay at my day job for a year, so totally an option if you want to do something like that, if you're just looking for a way to make extra money and pay down debt. So let me dive a little bit into why these two opportunities specifically. Now one may appeal to you more than the other, you can definitely do both. I've been doing both since 2012. My business is mostly writing and less virtual assistant and project management work, um, but you can flex it around what you want. The reason that being a virtual assistant and or being a writer I, are things that I recommend so strongly is because the learning curve for those is much lower than other types of freelance work. For example, if you wanted to be a web developer, you're probably going to need to go back to school, do an online training program, become an expert in web development. The learning curve there is very, very steep. Now you can charge a lot when you're done, but if you don't have that basic passion for web development and this basic, you know, talent to run with it, it can take you months before you land a paying client, right? Virtual assistants especially, you probably already have all of the potential tools to become a virtual assistant. Writers need to have an innate writing ability, you know, some basic level of writing talent. So let's break down um, being a virtual assistant first. You know, who you work for, what you do, um, who it's the right fit for. I use virtual assistants in my business. A rising number of online entrepreneurs and companies, as well as brick and mortar businesses, use VAs. VAs can do anything from scheduling, calendar management, uh, buying a gift and handling personal business for somebody, um, research, managing blog posts, doing social media, um, editing audio files that are going out on a podcast, proofreading, creating images, all of these kinds of things. You know, VAs sort of handle administrative and other tasks that the client doesn't have time to do. So every entrepreneur will at some point or another need a virtual assistant. I work with three of them. I know people who have teams even bigger than that. Um, so the demand for virtual assistants is huge because there's so many people establishing online businesses. And as opposed to other money-making opportunities, right? If you go into a multi-level marketing program, which there's nothing wrong with them, but you have to invest a lot of time in the training, um, you're not really in control, you, you can't really set your schedule right because you have to do these in-home parties at night, you may have to buy a lot of product. That's not the case with being a virtual assistant or even being a freelance writer. You've probably got 90% of the technology you need to do those jobs. Anyone who's been an administrative assistant, executive assistant, office um, administrator, whatever, has worked in an office, you're probably familiar with most of the tools you'd need to become a virtual assistant. Um, Google Docs, Microsoft Office products, um, all, all of these are the types of things you'd need to be familiar with as a virtual assistant. And basically, your job is to take things off the plate of your client. Um, so virtual assistants charge anywhere from $15 an hour and up. Really advanced virtual assistants who are actually managing digital teams of people or serving in the role of more of a business manager may charge $50 an hour or more, depending on um, what they're doing in the person's business. So um, that's kind of 
a basic introduction to being a VA. Um, I do have a course about how to become a VA. However, um, I for both, uh, you know, freelance writing and being a VA, if you want to just learn more about it and sort of like what's involved, I have free courses for both of those at laurateachesyou.com. The VA course is called VA 101, and it's basically, I dive into more information about what VAs are, how they work, um, why the demand for them is so huge right now, and how to kind of like the four things you need to do to get started as a VA. So you can sign up there as a student. It's totally free. Um, my Now on the freelance writing side, I do also have a free course for wannabe freelance writers. It's called How to Identify Your Freelance Writing Niche. I also have lots of advice on my blog about using Upwork specifically. So um, Upwork has become a, a decreasing portion of my business in recent years. However, as a total newbie, it's super, super important. Um, I was making six figures a year on Upwork alone or, or its predecessor, Elance. A couple of years ago, I became the number five ranked writer on Elance as well, was on their homepage for three years. So I know that system really, really well for Elance and Upwork. Basically, it's a bidding site where clients will go and request, um, you know, they might say, hey, I need five blog posts written. This is the topic. These are the guidelines. How much would you charge and how long would it take? So you can set up a profile on Upwork, uh, kind of like LinkedIn, um, but you will pay for Upwork. It's something affordable like 10 bucks a month and you might have to pay more for extra connects which are essentially the bids that you're using to pitch for these positions now it can take a while to break into upwork i've definitely figured out how to work the system a lot of my students have had great success with it but my tip to you is be patient with it make sure your profile is excellent any work samples or testimonials and your pitch to the actual client should be really really good so proofread it time and time again um, as a virtual assistant, you might find that it's harder to break in. So in that respect, I would network in Facebook groups for entrepreneurs. Um, there's frequently people saying they need VAs. So look for those Facebook groups online. Um, there's a great one run by Melissa Griffin called Blog Plus Biz BFFs. Every Tuesday, there's a collaboration thread. You can go offer a special deal as a virtual assistant and say, hey, I'm, I'm giving you know, 50% off or two free hours to anyone who books a five hour package with me. It's a great way to get your foot in the door, land your first couple of clients, get some testimonials, referrals, that kind of thing. On the freelance writing side, I will be pretty candid. You do need to have some level of writing ability. You do not need to be Shakespeare, but you need to have pretty good grammar, you know, 95 to 98% excellent grammar. And you just need to have a knack for writing and an enjoyment of it. Um, I've been doing this full time, you know, for almost, you know four and a half years now, almost five years. I love it, um, but it is work. It is, you know, you do have to do a lot of research and writing things for clients. So why would somebody hire a freelance writer? Um, they don't have time. Uh, they don't have writing ability or they're not confident with it or they simply just don't want to do it. So I've written content for everything from, you know, a, a one man insurance agent who wants to promote his business through blogs and Facebook posts all the way up to managing teams of writers for Microsoft and TrueCar. So everybody uses freelance writers. The demand is only increasing because content is really, really important on the internet. Um, so I have a lot of free materials about that. You can get a free guide about Upwork at my site, um, sixfigurewritingsecrets.com, all spelled out. Um, there's a, there's good material there. I've launched a podcast. Uh, um, episode one of my podcast is actually the three non-negotiables of starting a freelance writing career. I go into detail about the three things you have to have to get started. So that's free. Grab it. The Identify Your Freelance Writing Niche course. Um, also free. Grab it. You know, one of the reasons that freelancing is so cool is that you don't have to make a huge commitment to this to try it, right? Like worst case scenario, you sign up for Upwork for three months, you make your best effort of it. Um, if it doesn't appeal to you or it just doesn't work out, you're not in the hole, you know, so much as if you had gone out and, and tried to do something else as, as a job. Um, so for, you know, like when I got started, I was working on projects that I, I honestly didn't like. And sometimes it has to take, um, you have to take that practice and realize that there are certain types of things you don't want to write or types of clients you don't want to work for. But both of these opportunities, being a virtual assistant, being a freelance writer, huge amount of potential, right? Like I, I mean, as of two months ago, I was overbooked. I was so overbooked. I just could bear, I was barely meeting my deadlines. Um, and it's, it's kept me busy for the last, you know, th four and a half years. Yeah. Four and a half years of doing this, um, 
on a full-time basis, essentially. It's really kept me busy. It's something I love to do. Now, there's a little bit of different skill sets involved, so you might feel like you're naturally gravitating towards being a VA or maybe being a writer. You can also do both. I've done both. You might lean more one way than another, but it's great to um, learn about both. So uh, my final recommendation to you is that there is tons and tons of information out there about becoming a VA or becoming a writer. Absorb as much as you can that is free. Like I started with um, one ebook that cost me $49. Like I pay, I bought somebody's ebook to teach me how to do what I do, and the rest was learned trial by fire. The only reason I created courses, um, you know, I used to teach seventh grade in Baltimore City, totally burned out, quit, hated it, um, couldn't do one more day of it. So a lot of my colleagues from grad school or from teaching have reached out to me and said, hey, I want to do what you do. So I have just created my courses and even my free material to help you avoid common mistakes. Absorb the free material. Um, definitely allow yourself to, to learn, but the mo the best thing you can do for yourself if you are thinking about being a VA or being a freelance writer is to jump in right away. You know, develop good materials to market yourself with, um, but from there, really, you know, don't spend six months learning about it. Try to land your first couple of clients. Give them an incentive to work with you. Is it that you're going to give them a couple hours free? Is, that you're, is it that you're discounting your hourly rate? Get a couple clients in the door so you get the practice because like I said, the demand is high there. So if you're willing to take a gamble and say, hey, I'm, I'm willing to get paid a little bit less just to try this out and see if it works. Um, and Upwork is a great tool to use because why? Because those clients are already pre-sold. They already know they need to hire somebody. So you can also network with people in Facebook groups and that works out well for some. Um, you can also see what your kind of competitors are doing, what other writers or VAs are doing to market themselves in Facebook group. That's great research for you to see where other people are coming from. But make yourself like a, a deal that, you know, you're going to give this a, a good try and you're going to try to land your first couple of clients. Um, I have a lot, like I said, I have a ton of free material out there. There's other people who do a great job um, teaching about this. If my style doesn't resonate with you, please go find them. Um, I can make some recommendations for you personally based on what you're looking for or your background. Um, there's some great, great courses out there about becoming a VA, becoming a writer, the marketing techniques to land business with both. And I'm happy to point you in the right direction because, um, you know, my, my core selling business is a very small component of my business. I am, you know, a full-time freelance writer. So my goal is just to help point you in the right direction to get you started. So please go out there, grab those free materials from me or from anybody else. If you do have other questions after watching this video, just let me know because I am happy to sort of help uh, point you in the right direction. There's a ton of resources out there, a ton of, you know, paid things and a ton of free things, but the opportunity is real. Um, I know when I got started, people would like, you know, I had a colleague in grad school who like made fun of me, like, oh, are you actually making any money doing that? And then I got profiled in Business Insider and I was on the homepage of Elian's for three years and that kind of shut the naysayers up. So you will probably hear naysayers in your world they've never heard of working online before because uh, it kind of does sound too good to be true, but um, it is real and I love doing it and I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. So if I can help you any further, um, figure out, you know, I guess the difference between this and getting a traditional job, like if you go out and get a traditional job with someone else, you're on their schedule, you're going to do what they tell you to do. So the trade-off there is like, I control my schedule, I control who I work with, I control what I work on, but I have to do the work to land the clients. Now that's made easier with a place like Upwork because, you know, kind of like the client is already there looking to hire somebody. So it's a little bit easier to land those kinds of projects, but you can land clients anywhere, networking, LinkedIn, other social media sites, Facebook groups, um, all over the place. Um, some people even use cold emailing to, to land clients. So I hope this has been helpful. I know it's a lot of information. It's very hard to try to condense it into just, you know, a couple of minutes. Um, but I hope this has been helpful and let me know if you do have questions. Um, my uh, website for VAs is yourwaytova.com. That's all spelled out. And um, my writing website is sixfigurewritingsecrets.com, all spelled out. I've been on a bunch of podcasts, um, if you want to check that out, to hear how I built my business. Ed Gandia, um, B2B Biz Launcher podcast, I was on that one, uh, talking about how I built my freelance business using Upwork specifically. Brent Jones, I was on his video podcast about using Upwork as well. 
I'm trying to think of some other podcasts that I've done recently. Um, Isaiah Fowler has a uh, podcast as well. I was on that talking all about freelance writing. Um, so those things are out there. They're free. Go absorb them. And then my courses, all my courses are at um, laurateachesyou.com. And if you opt in for the free materials that are either on Six Figure Writing Secrets or your way to va.com, you get like a special coupon to use on the courses. Um, but that's totally up to you. That's not like my purpose in um, helping everybody with this. So if you have questions about it or if you um, need help figuring out someone else who might be a better fit for you to teach you these things or whether you should learn from a book or videos, etc., cetera, um, just let me know because I'm happy to help with that. I've, I've been there and, and done all of that um, but hopefully uh, I've given you a ton of information to think about I do encourage you to go and look at my free courses so you have a little bit better idea of what the opportunity is all about especially for the VAs because that free course is all about like um, why become a VA and why VAs are in demand and gives a little bit more of an overview um, but they are legitimate opportunities you do have to be your own boss kind of have to chase your own paycheck but it's kind of fun if you're that type of person who likes to do that so um, Thanks again for the opportunity for me to help you, gave you a lot to think about, and let me know if there's anything else I can help with.